In talking about ethics and integrity, there are key subjects that will keep surfacing. For example, principles, values, beliefs, norms, and the like. All those make up the subject of ethics and integrity. What then is ethics? One thing is for sure, ethics is at the very core of everyday life and it is a tool that helps us make good decisions. I'm also concerned about the lack, the paucity or dearth of exemplary leadership. Having worked among young people, I do know that many of them actually desire to see role models in leaders. But sadly, there are extremely few who can stand up and pass on ethics to the young people. And passing it on is not just what is taught. It is, in fact, largely what is lived. And so you find that many leaders, when they get into positions of responsibility, their only concern is what they can get out. And that to me is a concern because a country that has no values to pass on through its leaders is doomed. Is really, really doomed. And I'm pointing no fingers here, but I, I think we all know our eyes are open and we see this. It does not matter whether we are in church, in education, uh, in politics, in civil service, whatever it is. The fact that you can uh, not pass on, you cannot pass on um, ethical values as a leader. Uh, you cannot explain how you're feeding your family with a clear conscience, if you have a conscience at all, is to me a matter of great concern ethically. Then, of course, I'm concerned that public service is, has now become a matter of self-actualization. The very statement public service actually means that a person who is in public service is serving the public. I thought that should be self-evident. It's very clear. There is no need for anyone to explain that public service is service to the public. Nevertheless, and um, uh, in many years we've been hearing of people that when you get a position of leadership, you have actually eaten whatever local language we may use. But we talk of eating. And then all the people in your community gather around you more or less like pests. And unfortunately we encourage it. We encourage it, especially for, for people in positions of leadership. I had a brother who was in politics and he refused to buy people alcohol and things like that. He said, no, this is not, these are not values that I want to pass on. So self-actualization, when people get into positions of leadership to make a name for themselves rather than a name for the institution, for the country, and for those people. I always thought very much about when I was in positions of leadership that what would happen to my family if I was publicly put out with a scandal, irrespective of what scandal. What would happen to my family? It's not even about me. Maybe if I have no conscience, I can continue we, you know, living on like I, you know, it doesn't matter. But will my children be able to go to school with my name in the newspapers because of the wrong I have done? And so this self-actualization thing, I think for me, is a very big thing. And uh, I always looked at work 
as a vocation. Now that's different from a job because a vocation actually means that I am working as a calling. I feel a conviction. I feel a passion to work for other people. But this has been replaced by careerism, uh, which is not helping us as people seek self-actualization. The dualistic view of ethics. And what do I mean by dualistic? That we have learned somehow, as one state minister many years ago said, that it does not matter what I do in private, I can be a person of integrity, I can be an ethical person in public. Now, what a sad commentary on leadership when someone can make that statement. Because what you are in private is going to affect, is going to influence what you do in public. You are better off putting your life together. The dualistic view that somehow divorces the public life from the private is self-deception. It does not exist. If I am authentic, uh, as I usually say in the closet, then I will be authentic when I'm before people. I don't want to be someone who stands up, for example, to speak to other people. And my wife is seated in the congregation and she knows me better than anyone else. And my wife is wondering why I'm deceiving people, talking about all these nice you know, niceties of ethics, which I do not replicate at my home, with my wife, with my children. So that dualistic view, very sadly, is one of the worst things, and it lies also at the core of uh, undermining the ethics of our nation. Integrity is choosing your thoughts and actions based on values rather than personal gain. The truth of the matter is, we always know the right thing to do. The hard part is doing it. Robert H. Schuller says, for God and my country.